it's done. Right? They're all they're all covered. They're all mapped. So by definition, this mapping, this F, is surjective. All right now, how about injective? Uh, well, the usual thing. Um, you now take take two values, like let's say what F of you know, F of R, and take another one, F of S, and then you uh, you let these two be equal. So F of R equals F of S. Now we've done we've done this I don't know half a dozen times I guess already. So you, you 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 take two in the codomain, you let them be equal, and you try to prove that R equals S. And if that's true, then uh, this mapping is injective. You know, it means that uh, you can't have many to one mappings. You can't have a two to one mapping, for example. Uh, every element in your codomain gets mapped to at most once. So in other words once or not at all. Alright, so let's try to prove that. So um, see we you start with so f of the f of r equals f of s. That's the same as a r equals a s. And uh, what are we trying to prove? We're trying to prove that R and S are equal. And how do you prove that? All right, so you can rewrite this as R minus S is E. Okay, and uh, If a to the n is e, that's uh, from the previous theorem, uh, 18, okay. then uh, n is 0. Now that, that result is from uh, theorem 18, right, which we, we talked about before. Okay, so n's got to be 0, but he, here n is r minus s. So r minus s has to equal 0, and therefore r does equal s. Right? So we've proved it. So, so injective also done, right? So subjective, injective, and therefore, therefore bijective, done. Right? So we've, we've proved that. Now, now, uh, now we have to, now we have to do the like the f of m n is is f of m f of n, right? To to prove the. The isomorphism that the the corresponding elements in the table pair, uh, pair off appropriately, they map appropriately. So we, we have we have to show this. Ah, uh, let's see. So how to prove? What, now let's translate this into into our problem, into our f. So f of what? Of a a to the R, A to the S. So is this what everyone's doing? Oh no, 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 hold on. Sorry. He's he's mapping he's mapping from the integers. Okay. Uh, so F to R plus S that should map. Now, that will just be A, you know, the generator, to the R plus S, right? That's, that's, our, that's, that's our mapping proposal. That's what our F is, okay? Now, uh, now why did I do this? Well, I, I want to get something like this, right? Now, uh, A to the R plus S is the same thing as A to the R times A to the S, right? But what is A to the R? Well, it's F to the R. So that's f to the r, and similarly, that's f to the s. All right? And there it is. Well, here. Okay? Uh, well, the binary... Op yeah. you got a binary operation here, and here's your binary operation there. Uh, now, in this case, the binary operator is different from this one. 
Now this is just plus uh, addition of integers. And this, the binary operator here, is multiplication of, just multiplication of, of powers of the generator little a. Okay, so uh, done. So that's uh, that, that's that's done. So that's uh, part one of theorem thirty six. Now part two. Uh, what does it say? That's a bit more complicated, and again, I don't know, it's not an IFF, good. So, a bit less work. Okay, here, part two says, every cyclic group of finite order, n, is isomorphic to, so, uh, so to every, every cyclic Every cyclic group, order n, now it's this, this time we're talking about the order of the group, okay? Uh, I don't know why the early pure mathematicians, group theorists, did not invent a different word. I mean, it causes so much confusion, but it's set in stone, like there's a million mathematicians who use it and you can't really change it, the custom is too strong. I think I've said that before also. Okay, so uh, this order now is of the group, so it's the number of elements in the group. Okay, so every cyclic group of order n is isomorphic, is isomorphic to what? To the following group. What's the binary operator? Plus. Okay. I, hope, I hope you can see that. Uh, all right, now here's, a, here's another bit of confusion uh, that keeps arising. This z here, now look, this, this z here is just set of integers. Right? In the context, you know, that's pretty simple. Uh, now I've got a suffix n here, so what are we talking about? Are we, are we talking about the simple um, set of Integers like naught, one, two, dot, 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 n minus one, or are we talking about the set of residue classes? Okay. So the book in the book we're talking about residue classes. Okay. So you <laughs> uh, in in Barnard you, you really have to pay attention to this uh, because he uses he uses this symbol in two different ways. And uh, he switches back and forth. And you you have to look at uh, the context uh, for each time he uses this to see whether he's talking about a set of simple integers, or is he talking about a set of residue classes? In other words, a set of uh, infinite sets. Okay. Now, for part two of this theorem, uh, every cyclic group order n is isomorphic to uh, a set of residue classes. Okay, that's what, that's what this is. This is this set. Well, in fact, it's a group. Uh, contains n residue classes. So, so n infinite sets. I assume by now you have a pretty good idea what an a, a residue class is. Okay. All right. Uh, so. Uh, so part A is we need to find a good mapping, an F. And we have to discuss, you know, does it make sense? Is it well formed is the technical term. Uh, and which way are we going to map? Right? Are we going to map this into a cyclic group? Or are we going to go the cyclic group into the into the into this? So which, which, which way will we go? Well, um, you know, <laughs> this, is a, this is a creative choice. And, uh, well, what Barnard does, he chooses, he chooses to go from this to this. So here's, here's his mapper, his, his function, his f. So he's going to map uh, this into 
uh, no, what's he going to call it? Um, he still calls it, calls it A, right? So A is the uh, cyclic group of order N. Right? It's, it's, this A here is not this A, right? It's uh, this, this A now, it's the order of this group, it's a cyclic group, is now uh, N. Right? Order N. And we have, we have, so, well, that's, that's his proposal. Now, uh, in terms of an, so they're groups, so he's mapping from this group to that group. Now, in terms of actual elements, uh, we want some element of this uh, group. So uh, let's just choose an, an arbitrary one. So we'll take a residue class R mod N, okay? And we'll map, and that will well, that be equal to what? Well, one of some element of uh, A, okay? So, so let A, little a, is the generator, is the generator of big A, okay? So uh, what will that be? Well, R. It, in fact, it, it's pretty similar. Right? It's pretty similar to to this. So here, your z is just a set of integers. So this will just be a, a simple integer, right? R. But here, your z of n, that's a, a set of residue classes, 